Hey, Kia ora, Sue. And also my respects to the mayor of San Francisco. Um, predictive analysis is starting to throw a lot of light on where this pandemic is going to be going. It's shown to be a fractal, which means what happens on the small scale happens on the big scale. Each country is coming out with almost exactly the same shaped graphs. We can look at these graphs on a site called Worldview. And by using these graphs, we can then predict some rather important events that are going to be coming up. I did want to mention that um, Chris Munkholm has given me a pretty good admonishment because I did say that uh, New Zealand was the only country that's over the hump. It's not true. Uh, there are other countries such as uh, South Korea, Taiwan, and Vietnam uh, who have jumped on this thing early and uh, are now uh, definitely over the hump. And we can now apply what they have with the work that I've done on New Zealand. And we'll see if they line up. Also, uh, when we have predictive analysis, with predictive analysis, we have that um, uh, the graphs in Worldview on the site called Worldview that give us the, um, the data and the graphs that we have. All, they've lined up all the graphs with dates one under the other. So you can just go straight up and down and that way be able to relate one graph to the other and how they relate together. So that's very, very nice. Also, highly recommend that you look at the videos from um, Three Blue, One Brown, uh, which give uh, analysis, mathematical analysis, and very beautiful way of showing how, uh, how we can track this disease and, and predict what is happening in these disease. Uh, again, it's a form of predictive analysis. One of the things that Three Blue, One Brown is, is talking about is what's called detect, detect and detain, which means we, we find out where the disease is and then isolate those people which is a very powerful way of responding to it. Unfortunately, to do that, you need to test your entire population every single day. And that becomes impractical, but there are ways of getting around that uh, by protecting uh, essential workers and so forth. Uh, those are the people that uh, you can detect and protect in that way and somehow keep the population going. But we'll talk about that later. Uh, and we'll talk about the math behind this and so forth. But right now, I want to talk about predictive analysis. There are four countries that we have seen that are over the hump. One is New Zealand, as I'm showing here. This is under the graph of active cases. Notice how there is an inflection point here on March the 28th that relates directly with this inflection point that I will discuss later. This is the New Zealand data. This is the South Korea data. And these are the active cases. There is a long tail, and they're, they've now um, hammering this right to the very end. We see that there is a peak here somewhere. Very difficult on, this is daily deaths, sorry, wrong graph. This is daily new cases. So we would say maybe there's a peak here on March the 3rd, which would correspond to a kink here under total cases. And total active cases, their inflection point is about here, and we're reaching here on February 29th. So if we're looking for the inflection point, it would show up on March 29th. This is the cases for South Korea, and South Korea is well over the hump and well on its way. This is the Taiwan graph of active cases, which is also over the hump. We look at this particular peak seems to be March 20th. We see this lines up in this case, which is total cases. And if we have the active cases, it would show you know, right on top of each other. March 20th would show an inflection point here uh, of March 20th for Taiwan. Okay, this is the active cases graph for Vietnam, which we see is very definitely over the hump. We see Perhaps uh, an inflection point about here. Looks like it would correspond to this particular peak here. And these are the total cases, which is this typical S-curve as they're beginning to, uh, to near the end of this. Again, there may be a long tail on it. So we need to wait until this graph has actually hit the bottom and then wait two weeks afterwards. Okay, so what we've seen is that the graphs line up. The graphs we're going to look at Start with total cases. This graph looks like an S curve. It'll come up exponentially, 
and then start to die off. It'll take a while to die off because it's got a tail on it. And we now make a neat line down here. We'll find off theoretically when there's zero cases. Uh, beginning to end. On top of this, make a nice green line here. There's a phantom period of two weeks, 14 days prior, where no one has shown up. This is our initial time when the first person, the first person is detected in the region of uh, contracting the disease. We will assume that person contracted the disease about 14 days earlier. The next graph we want to look at is called active cases. Luckily, it lines up nice and neatly underneath it. This is active cases. Active cases has now, um, there's green here, there's a very important point here with total cases called the inflection point. The inflection point will be more to the left. It won't be exactly in the middle. This is the inflection point. It is the inflection point of total cases. And let us line this up. The reason that's important is because if our active cases will look like this, start to go up and it'll reach a peak and then take forever to die off with a long tail. This is what I mean by a long tail. Now, this point lines up with this point. The active cases will also have an inflection point here, where it will start to kind of turn. In other words, the active cases will increase and then start to decrease. That does not mean you're over the hump. You're not over the hump until you get to this point. And the way to find this may be a little difficult to find this other inflection point. This we'll call the second inflection point. Which is right here. Or the active. I think active is a better word. So we'll use the active inflection point, which is a first inflection point. Nice thing about that is that would be about the halfway point between these two points. So if you reach the inflection point, and not that many countries, most countries have, yeah, a lot of countries have reached the inflection point. Only four that I know of, put that in there, which is Taiwan, South Korea, Vietnam, and New Zealand, and there may be other countries. I'd really like to know about them because that way we can get better and better data for those countries that haven't reached there yet. And again, we put a dot down there. Now going to our next graph, which means new daily cases. This is where new daily cases. In new daily cases, starts to look fairly simple and then it goes kind of weird. So it will climb, uh, start with one of course, and then come up. And then as it begins to approach this inflection point, it goes kind of crazy, but you'll see a peak here. Until it begins to get over the hump, we're wondering what in the world this thing's doing, and then it will start to actually you know, kind of behave itself down here. So as a result, we can do some predictions. We can take this, which we can assume somewhere around the halfway point, and make a prediction to where we're going to be at the end. The same thing. We have this point here, this inflection point is only a quarter of the way through, not halfway through. A guess, a possible guess, is the distance between the peak and the initial period. 
depending on how the country has reacted to it, how quickly it has changed the growth rate, means uh, that this will theoretically approach a halfway point. Uh, the tail could become extremely long. So that this should be taken with a rather large grain of salt, and we can then predict some idea of when this thing will be over. For New Zealand, I have used the New Zealand date, and on March 28th was this inflection point. So this was March 28th. The first case in New Zealand, because I have it, that happened to be February 28th. The peak date I had predicted at April the 15th. I thought this would be at April the 15th. It ended up being at April the 8th, uh, well, a week earlier, seven days earlier, and that was because the country reacted so fast. I'd made that before I'd seen the, uh, <clears throat> before I'd, I'd been able to put in how fast, the, what I call the cooperation rate or the cooperation factor. Um, from this, now making corrections and so forth as we go forward, um, the release date uh, I'm saying here for New Zealand, May, give me black, that way you can read it, May 31st for New Zealand. I will say no new infections, no new infections, daily new cases here will be May 14th. That's my prediction. That's what I'm saying the prediction is. However, that is not the time when everyone can go home. You must have zero new infections, plus everyone has to recover. So you got to put 14 days on top of that. And everyone's recovered. And then because of the Australians and New Zealanders, they say, uh, give it a couple of days more than that. And that will give you May 31st. That's how I came up with that date. And that's what we can do with predictive analysis. The big thing we want to see is, are we over the hump? We need to go down in the active cases, in the active cases uh, uh, graph. And that's the graph that you have to look at. That's the most important one. The one we can make predictive analysis is this peak in the new daily cases lines up with that inflection point quite well. And you just go back and forth. It's usually easy, quite easy to spot. And from there, you can start getting some time estimates provided the population cooperates, provided you don't release people early, provided you know we have good cooperation and things maintain some sense of uh, some sense of order with what we're doing as we're using quarantine and the and using the, the weapon of quarantining of compulsory quarantine to be able to fight this this disease with everyone cooperating. So we can do some um, predictive analysis. Uh, this The data is showing us that this thing is acting like a fractal. What happens on a small scale happens on a big scale. And uh, all the graphs look the same. It's just a difference of the, the time span and a difference of scale. The uh, most important factor that shows up all over the place is this thing that I'm calling the cooperation factor. How quickly a country starts acting together. Um, this is, I've explained this in a previous video, and the only um, weapon I think that we have is quarantining, compulsory quarantining uh, for everyone, and that has shown to work, and uh, as I will explain as we see in the graphs, that they all look the same, they're different shape, uh, sorry, they're all the same shape, but uh, different sizes and so forth with scale. And the other thing uh, to get this cooperation factor to happen is that leaders have to give very clear, easily understood messages, and there very simply can't be any confusion in the messages that leaders are giving to the population. Taking a look at what we have found out, some fairly obvious points seem to jump out at us. Supply lines have to concentrate on essentials. You can use the military and you can engage the youth. Concentrate your testing on, of course, the military, supply chain and essential services, your food producers, and, of course, your health workers. 
In the context of Māori Tāanga, Tāne is walking the earth. And Tāne is both uh, the god of death as well as the god of knowledge. And the lesson that we're uh, being taught is very clear. We work together or we die together. 